So this last Wednesday, in honor of a day off Twitch, I ended up streaming over on YouTube because I wanted to understand how the YouTube platform worked in terms of as a broadcaster for streaming, but also I took the time to try and find new streamers over on YouTube so I could understand what it was like as a viewer on the same platform. And here are some of my takeaways while using YouTube live streaming throughout the entirety of that Wednesday, but also a couple of the days following up to now, which is Friday. My first takeaway as a broadcaster, I love the fact that I can actually push my bitrate up to, for 1080p 60, I can push my bitrate up to 9,000 kilobits per second. That extra ability to go a little bit higher allows for a smoother, more consistent, less pixelated, 1080p 60 stream. So anybody who's playing fast paced shooters or games that need a lot of bit rate to be able to look good at 1080p, having the ability to push yourself up to 9,000 versus Twitch's cap at 6,000 was actually really nice. And even for those that don't play fast paced games, the ability to push just a little bit further up to enhance the quality of your stream and anything else was a huge bonus, honestly, that I thought. The other good thing about that, especially because Twitch doesn't have always on transcoding for non partnered Twitch streamers. So that means that if you're an affiliate and you're trying to stream at 6,000 kbps, anybody who has internet that's either slower than that 6,000 or maybe just isn't consistent or stable, they're going to be constantly buffering throughout your entire stream over on Twitch. They have no option to drop it down to a lower bit rate that their internet can handle. Whereas YouTube has that. YouTube has the full ability that I can send my stream out at 9,000, but somebody whose internet can only take 3,000, they could just drop my stream down to 480p. Now, yes, it doesn't look as good, but they can watch, they can still interact, they can still enjoy the content that's being created by whatever broadcaster that's out there. Another one is, is that as soon as your stream's done, it's automatically already archived into YouTube. You don't have to try and export it and then put it out over there and then up re-upload it. And then whereas YouTube just simply records it, puts it right up, done. So anybody who missed the stream or anybody that's new can go find that video and it lasts forever. It's not gonna go away in 14 days, I think for non-Prime members and 30 days for Prime members and then I think 60 days for partners. So when you click end stream, you don't stop making views on a stream. People can go back and watch it further and watch it more. And as you grow on your YouTube, more people are gonna find some of your past streams and you're gonna continue to gain views to all of these past streams and past videos that you have done. A big downside, however, is the chat. God. This was my biggest gripe about this, but here's the thing, UI can completely change. Right now, the way that chat's being done is there's no way for you to really affect like people's colors on their names, so it's kind of hard to differentiate different people that are in your chat. Like I missed several messages because I was like, oh, I didn't realize that that was that person because I thought I already read it because it just all looks the same. The other thing is, is that YouTube has two different types of live streaming chats. You have live and you have top. If you're on top, if you're a larger streamer and things are being spammed, the top chat actually gets rid of a lot of the spam so you don't see it. Well, when you're a smaller streamer like myself or uh, well, like the other 95% of us that are out there, you can actually miss messages from your community because it's considered spam or inappropriate or whatever else the case is. So when you're in the chat system, make sure that you, instead of having top chat, you have it on live chat. That means every message that's coming in, you will see. So you don't do what I did and miss a bunch of community members messages. And then finally someone's like, why are you skipping my messages? And I was like, what? And then we realized as a community, oh, there's another chat system. So keep that in mind. Again, uh, when I was talking about kind of the, the UI stuff, if there's somebody, this is my call that's everybody that's out there because I don't know how to do this. If you could make a third party chat client for YouTube, like chatty or something along those lines, I will do everything I can to promote that because I'm so tired of having just white chat names and nothing else. Like give me the ability to highlight messages and, you know, set nicknames to people like I can over on Twitch a little bit. And, and I don't need it to be exactly like Twitch. I, they can each be their own type of service, but the chat system on YouTube does need some help to make sure that as broadcasters, we can just kind of see things a little bit more clearly. You know, alternating message lines, having slightly different colors so you can see every other type thing. Just It just needs just a little bit of sprucing up, but that can change. The other big gripe that I think a lot of people are gonna have is monetization over on YouTube. It's, at least in my opinion, not the easiest to get to a thousand subscribers with four 
1,000 watch hours on YouTube. Whereas Twitch, you need 50 followers, an average of three viewers, and I think you need to stream for like six days or something like that out of the month. Not that I'm saying that that's easy, but it's easier than having a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours as it is over on YouTube. So if you're gonna be streaming on YouTube, just bear in mind that you either are gonna need to have an external platform like Patreon or Coffee or something like that, or you're just gonna have to understand that you're not gonna be able to make money through YouTube's monetization, through ads and other such things like memberships for a while yet. So just bear in mind and keep that expectation expectation of yourself that you're not going to go in and have, you know, affiliate or YouTube partner within, you know, a month or so. It's going to take you some time to get to that point. So those are some of my thoughts as I've been in it so far. As a viewer to YouTube streams, I actually don't really find them that different than Twitch. I actually find the quality to be a lot better over on YouTube. Finding some of the streams can be a little bit difficult because the UI over on YouTube, I'm just not used to yet. And I do think it needs just a few tweaks here and there, but with their acquisition of Dr. Lupo, Courage, and now Tim the Tatman, you know, and as of yesterday, Tim the Tatman had over 100,000 viewers and Dr. Disrespect had, I think when I checked about 70,000 viewers, six, somewhere between 60 and 70,000 viewers. That's bringing a lot of traffic over to the YouTube side. If we start asking for changes to be made and for stuff to be rolled out, we can either have third party integrators, like what I asked about for the chat systems, they're going to start taking a notice in YouTube because more people are asking for these things or YouTube themselves will start to roll out more features down the line. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this down below because I, I, I'm actually very curious to see what other people think about the YouTube platform as a whole. Let me know and let's have a conversation about this. So till then, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Love you. Bye.